I don't know if I should tell the story. Okay. I missed his call and you yeah. guys had just yeah, won the sorry. Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. And he left me a voicemail and I wish I f***ing saved the voicemail. I f***ing you not. He ended it with, yeah, just give me a ring. It's Coach Stout. Da, da, da. Okay, that's Coach Stout, Super Bowl 52 champion. No! <laughs> I swear to God. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to New Heights, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card, the debit card that builds credit without the debt. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey. New Heights episodes drop every Wednesday during the NFL season, but we got to you on a Friday because we've got a special guest, 92 percenters. <laughs> Subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, and follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. Jason, tell them what the f*** we got coming up. We got a great episode, 92 percenters. That's right. We got the one and only former rugby league sensation from the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs and the South Sydney Rabbitohs, whatever that is. Uh, he's Fire a six up. foot eight, 365 pound off of the God tackle, damn. hailing from New South Wales, Australia. He's a six year veteran tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles and the real star yeah. of the Philly special Christmas album, making his New Heights debut. Please welcome Mr. Jordan Mailata! Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you for Well, what an uh, intro. Holy cow. Let's go, We've been man. waiting to have this one because <laughs> your story is incredible. Uh, I think we're excited to share it with our fans, the 92 percenters, and anybody else willing to listen to this. Welcome to New Heights. Welcome to New Heights, man, where we don't really know how to take things serious. Uh, Jason, why don't you <laughs> teach him a little? Does he know new, new news? Does he know new, new news? Have you listened to the I, pod I, I at all? Know, I know you the know? concept. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd be lying if nice. I said I wasn't practicing in the car. Wow. Dude. This guy's a fucking I mean, he's a vocal, a he's a, he's a vocal phenom, so yeah. he's he's Dude. he's on top of it. That just gives you a little bit more pressure <laughs> to nail this. All right. Here we go. Before we get going, we got to start with a little new news. New news. New news. God, so jazzy. God, that was damn it, he's <laughs> fucking just owned us right He's talented. Me. Talented guy. Yeah, <laughs> just a little damn something. It. A little something. A little <laughs> well, um, as you know, Jordy, our new Christmas album is coming out December 1st. Um, I actually think it's coming out. Well, I guess it's officially being sold Black Friday. But I think it launches uh, electronically December first. Is it fair to say, Jordan, that you you carried the entire Christmas album? I'm, oh. I'm, on, I'm not in the room. I'm not in the room. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'll take my you headphones don't have off to for this. Be room. modest oh, here. Man. You can go ahead and, dude, you um, absolutely kill it. Man, I wouldn't say I carried it, man. We all have our our, our part to play in the the album, man. But uh, very humble for man. sure. I, I definitely sure. sang on a lot of the songs. Um, but again, we all had a we had a part to play in this album, man. It wasn't just me. I just uh, I feature. On a lot of the songs, <laughs> it is a good it, it is a good mesh of Jason singing, Lane singing, and then you singing because it's like you get that like fun, like you're here, Jason's here, and Lane's right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you get that good like stair step of like people actually being able to sing, and um, it adds a lot of character, is what I'm saying, and it's really unique and really cool and. Um, the fact that you guys are all on the offensive line together, man, hats off to you guys. That's a, it's a cool deal. And, uh, it's fun to be a part of now that Jason has brought me in, um, from me being a birds fan, uh, for the past 13 years. Um, he brought me in knowing that I play for the enemy at times, but yeah, yeah. Well, you're the enemy, but you're still a part of the family. Have Still go birth, baby. Extended. I'm with you. I'm with you. Have you spoke about your part? Yeah, we spoke part? about it. We spoke about it a little bit last. Yeah, we didn't last say week what song it was. Yeah. But I'm terrified of. Uh, I don't even know what song it was. We kind of made it our own. So, Fairy Tale of New York. And we kind of changed the lyrics around to be Fairy Tale mm -hmm. of Philadelphia. That's the song nice. that you and I are on. Did you listen to that one? Dude, yeah, you like that one? Not. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it, dude. I didn't know you could sing. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be Jason, honest, yeah, I know. I Jason's know pretty. He, no, he's a musical yeah. genius. We, we know who we're, he's talking to. Trav what? is better at me at everything, including singing, <laughs> and we're going to find that out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Zero we'll, see, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, I do like your voice better, though. I will uh, say that. He's, I do like he's a good voice. friend. He's a good friend. Uh, it's well, a it's nice like, raspy voice. Yeah, bro. that's what I'm saying. It's it like sounds a raspy like voice. He sounds like Nickelback, right? Oh my days! Oh my days! Oh my god, that's terrible! What am I getting the blonde man? Is is Nickelback big in Australia? Um, it was when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, 
so I'll be honest, I didn't listen to much Nickelback growing up. Uh, maybe like you know, a couple of their songs. Yeah. But when I got here, when I, I got here in 2018, I didn't <laughs> understand why they were hated so much. I, I thought <laughs> I thought Nickelback was great. It's pretty I'm good, like, dude. This is awesome. This is guys like Americans Jason love Nickelback. <laughs> I come here, I try to make friends. I'm like, hey, so yeah, I listen to Nickelback. They're like, this guy's a loser. This guy's a loser. Like, what's he doing? What's he that's, doing? That's oh, pretty I was gosh. like, they told me that they, they hate Nickelback. And I was like, oh, no, okay. We take that was, no uh, I never said that line again here. to make friends. Well, well um, you guys got a bunch of Philly legends yeah. on this thing outside of now that we're talking about some uh, musical geniuses. On the second album, you sing a duet with Philly legend Patti LaBelle. Dude. That had to be fucking. I can't wait to hear this one. Um, How I was that. I dude? can't wait to hear that one too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I I did it at first. I thought it wasn't going to happen <laughs> that we were going to feature uh, Patty Labelle, and um, you know when she came in to record the piece, I was like, oh, we were, we were actually both in awe. There's footage of when she she came into the facility to yes. record her part. Yeah. And we're both in awe, and then I didn't need to do any singing because I had already recorded my part. So we just needed her to record her parts until uh, I think it was CB. So Connor Barwin made the suggestion, would you like Jordan to sing with you? In my head, I was like, man, how dare you, man? I didn't think I can do it because I was like, I don't know, kind of, yeah. it's kind of like Starstruck. You go on it. Yeah, well, there's a, por- <laughs> there's a portion of the song that Patty's on this Christmas that um, there's like a back and forth between Jordan and her. And it, yeah. it feels weird, I think, trying to do that with a recording and not just do it live. So Jordan yeah. actually got to sing live with Patty in the yeah, Eagles facility. So cool, it was man. insane. And so the first cool. time through, he literally did not say a single word because he was too nervous. <laughs> I, listen, man, uh, if you know me, I, I don't get nervous much, but right. Oh, I mean, that was nerve wracking, man. That was yeah. nerve wracking. Like singing Dude. in front of a great like that, man. There's no way. Th- what was harder <laughs> that or the viral clip of you singing at your wedding, which one were you more nervous for? <laughs> oh, I mean, th- well, definitely, different- definitely, definitely Patty LaBelle. Was yeah. I reckon. Well, oh, was it different types of your- nerves maybe? Yeah. Like one of them, you're like singing to your future wife or your current wife. Then you guys had already been married at that point. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, definitely no nerves there. I, I knew I was going to crush it. Not going to lie to you. <laughs> I knew I was going to crush it. Everybody in the crowd about. is my friends and family. They're yeah, going to so love it. Like, like, everyone there, I'm like, oh, I love. They're not going to judge me. If I screw it up, they're not going to judge me. So I'm like, this is great. And I practiced for about two weeks. Yeah. Well, I heard you practicing in the locker room right before yeah. you went. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. Well, we know that uh, you won America over right there with that if you hadn't already. Um, what was the highlight of recording the sequel, though? Like the full scheme of things. What do you think? Um, I mean, I'm not going to give a press answer. I think, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think the for the majority of my experience for the the sequel is probably just seeing. I think like we got to see the creation of the songs more this yeah. year, yeah. Than we did last year. I thought that was really special. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. And I, I'm going to take that with me forever, man, because. That that was that was really special. Seeing the music That's being cool, made, man. yeah. Um, seeing your song, <laughs> I mean, I came for the second half of it, but mm-hmm. that was amazing. And so, yeah, that's what I'm going to take away. I agree. I, I'm I'm right there with you. I think, um, you know, me, you, and Lane get put on the face of the album, mm-hmm. but obviously, there's so many other musicians, not just the star-studded people that help it out, help us out with it, but you know, between you know, Beave, Charlie, yeah. Eliza. Zach, uh, Nick, like everyone, uh, Luke, like all the musicians on it. Um, it's really fun watching that go from nothing to something and all of them <clears throat> to put their flavor on it. I'm with you, yeah. man. That was but special. The creative process was, was awesome, bro. Like, yeah. That was something. And like being a big muso. Yeah. Like, like we're not big muses, but like we love music. You know. Well, first of all, don't lump me in the I same category as you. <laughs> you got a guitar. We already in the talked about the tears, <laughs> Jordan. He is yeah. way here. He is fuck like Nickelback and then Jason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jordy has a guitar Nick- in the locker room that he is playing and practicing throughout the day. And not only does he have a guitar now, now he, he has a, a now he has a banjo. He recently just bought a banjo and he's been teaching oh, himself shit. banjo in the locker room. 
Um, I am unequivocally That's nowhere awesome. near oh as musically gosh, inclined as Jordan. Jason's actually on record saying that you're only playing in the NFL to boost your music <laughs> career. Are do you have some like songs in your back pocket, like an album, just like kind of on the side that you're ready to uh, uh, no release? No Marks is all done. No I'm gonna I'm leave that to it. the uh, creative minds of the audience. Well, let me at least ask. I'll ask you this then. What uh, what other singers would you would you like to do a duet with? Like, who's on the top of like your like? music singing uh list i mean i'll be honest i just saw john legend and uh yeah. you're you talking about ohio week. baby and uh ohio, and, I, and i got, I got the, i was privileged enough to to be able to meet him after with my wife and nice. uh, shoot dude that dude live is incredible and uh, it was the yeah. first time i ever seen him uh perform and oh, special man so probably him he's up there right now yeah. uh you know this artist i, I would love to collab with him not even collab man just like just be around and yeah from him just be just around talk recording to him. yeah I, I could not believe the showmanship and and he's a muso for real oh yeah another level yeah another level yeah and all yeah. of you that was impressive um <laughs> just don't, don't, all right don't that's, impressive. Don't that's all i got that's all i got <laughs> um Nice, man. Well, I uh, we can't wait till the album drops December first, mm -hmm. um, and I can't wait to hear what you guys have uh, kind of tweaked and turned in the uh, the new Philly Christmas album, man. Yeah, you haven't listened to any of the other songs, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't even. I haven't even really listened to my part. Like, I kind of like <laughs> you just, just skip like, over it, right, dude. I am. <laughs> I do not want to hear myself sing it. like that. <laughs> no, yeah, sure. I'm more of like a rock and like I got the rock voice. You know what I mean? I like a rock and roll voice. Yeah, I don't Nickelback. really have like the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who don't I get out of the <laughs> well, let's keep this thing moving. Before we get to our very formal, very serious interview with you, I, um, <laughs> let's first answer some not dumb questions because there's no such thing as dumb questions. Just dumb people. Hey, yo. Um, no Dumb Questions is brought to you by our friends at Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Ooh. God damn, this, this peach paradise is fucking getting me fucking excited right now. You hear what I'm saying, brother? Ooh, he's got a little cherry limeade over cherry there. Limeade. We, gotta get, we gotta get Jordan on, on the train, man. You're talking about some Hilo gummies. We got to get you on the accelerator train, man. We, we can turn this into an ASMR podcast real quick if you want, brother. I mean, let's fucking go. We can do it right now. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> well, no Dumb Questions is brought to you by our friends at Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Um, accelerator Active Energy Drink is available on Amazon for all of you that are uh, wondering. You can get this thing sent straight to your front door and just be fueled with energy. All right, now. So we, uh, we answered... Um, this not dumb question a couple weeks ago on the show, but now that we have an actual rugby star, uh, yeah. oh, rugby God. star turned NFL pro, I mean, out. we got to take, we got to take the expertise to you. And, um, I think it's best we get your answer here. So from at spear 40 on YouTube, no dumb question. Do you think rugby players have a chance in the NFL? <laughs> Clearly, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually did see that. I did actually you? did see that clip last week. What'd you think? Um, I don't think you're. I don't think you're wrong, or but all you, right. You, or right. <laughs> yeah, I think there are, there are some specimens that can transfer over. Okay, um, but I think specimens. for the most part, I think a lot of people oh, specimens think that rugby specimens. players can can transition over. It's a tough sport. Do you think there are NFL players that could transition over to rugby? 100%. Really? Yes. NFL players could play rugby. But isn't it – it's a completely different energy system, right? Yes. Like, it's more long-distance form. It's endurance. Like, yeah, yeah. It's technique. Yeah. Um, I think – I mean, that's that's where, I guess, people get confused with it is when, when we tackle – because we don't wear pads. Yeah. When we tackle, it's like, oh, not every hit on every tackle is a huge hit. you got to conserve your energy. Sure. So, this thing like numbers and tackle – in a tackle. So you get like three guys in the tackle. They absorb mm. the energy. Yeah. The, you know, the, the hit up is what we call it, the run. Okay. Um, but it's, again, just over 80 minutes and it's just continuous. You just have to be really fit. Yeah. Cardiovascular wise, you got to be fit. Mm -hmm. um, but the toughness part, yeah, it's it's tough, but it's, again, you got to conserve your energy. So there's like different parts of rugby where you where you see those highlight, those highlight hits. I mean, those are just like incredible plays made by incredible players. Like you just fucking running through everybody. <laughs> well, Dude, your highlight film tackling, is, uh, but, How heavy were you when you played? Talking about I, endurance, man. I was uh, I was three ten. Oh yeah, I was three ten. How crazy is it? How I was three ten? An I endurance test. <laughs> Dude, I, I was three ten, and I was a, I, I probably you're a like specimen. pretty low body fat. 
Yeah. And they still consider me that I was too big at 310 because they would see me and they'd be like, there's no way you're 310. Step on the scale. They're like, oh, sh- shit, he's 310. <laughs> like, he's 311. Big body. It's a big body, a lot of running. Big, I mean, I still remember when you showed up overweight the one off season at 380 uh-huh. and you were 20% body fat. Nobody believes that. I uh, just witnessed that. Yeah. And they yelled at you for being overweight and you were a lower body fat percentage than me at 290. <laughs> You're 100 pounds more <laughs> and less body fat percentage. Um, which is insane. Is I mean, cool. it's so crazy. God, I, I don't so know. Big, bones. Yeah, big bone, big, big body, big body. I, I, yeah, I can't explain that. So, so I, I don't, I don't want to jump off the rugby stuff just yet because mm-hmm. a lot of other people that were commenting was like, there's a difference between, I guess, rugby league and what's the yes. other. Yeah, so I, I played league. Okay. I just, I, what's, what's the other one called? Am I allowed to swear on the podcast? Oh, yeah, please. Be great. Yeah. I can, I'll send a kid to college. I just can't be fucked. Um, <laughs> I just can't. Oh, that's wrong. I actually do remember. Great, because I'll make a lot of money for them. I just could not be fucked explaining to people the difference between rugby league and rugby union. Yeah. Those are the two different types of rugby. Okay. Rugby union's 15s, 15, 15 people. Yeah. And then league was 13. Oh, I didn't. So, so, so I played league. league. I just couldn't be asked, like, explaining to people the two differences. So I just... Kept it under the same so that's, umbrella. That's the umbrella difference. Yeah. So, is it fair to say that rugby league is probably more big plays, like higher, like running, because yes. there's more space for less people? Yes. That leads to kind of maybe <clears throat> some more exciting runs. Is that fair? Yeah. It's a, I, I I kind of compare it like this. Um, league and union is like the CFO and NFL. It's the same game, just different set of rules. Got it. Okay. Just different set of rules. And uh, honestly, league, I think you have to be more on the fitter side for league because every time they make a tackle, you yeah. have to like Get run back. Position. You got to run back 10 meters. Oh, really? And then then, and then, go then they play the ball. Then you have to go. Yeah, then you have to create oh a, a wall. I, it's just very cardiovascular enduring, which is why I came here. <laughs> <laughs> every three seconds, we get to sit. Every- <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, someone told me seconds. that was a sport. I was like, what? So what? Another component of this question was also which what's tougher rugby <sighs> which players are tougher rugby players or NFL players or football all right. players all right I don't know uh okay I'll be honest you're okay? gonna be hated either way so don't yeah I know I know I'm not even gonna be like politically safe on this okay I will say this um when people ask me over the years what's what's tougher yeah I say that the NFL is tougher Really? And then I say this. That's like a little There's a caveat. Know, there's a caveat. Okay. I say if you play O line and D line, it's harder. Okay. It's definitely harder than rugby. Not tight end though. This fucking guy. No, it's all right. He does this. He does this is what he does, Jordan. Keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did I, yeah, I definitely right. no, set you right. up on that <laughs> one, bro. I'm sorry. Um but we get I, a little was, piece I, of the fucking action. We get a little you know what I'm saying? You do you do, you do. Play a little bit. I mean, mean. You guys are like that forgotten stepchild, you know, like <laughs> of the O line. That's why they got a day f- named after. Him. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't true. want to cut you off. Though. What were so no, you going to say? So I, I always tell people like, if you play O line and D line, that's mm-hmm. it's tougher than rugby because one, the pads don't do shit. They don't, <laughs> bro. First off, when when people like you guys wear pads, you're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> What? Yeah. I said the pads. The pads don't do anything. They don't protect they, shit. They, they make okay. you feel like you can hit people harder. So, okay. The 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 bloody uh the pad that goes on your chest is like this thin. It's like this thin, and you're copping you you're copping a fucking helmet to the sternum. That shit hurts, dude. And then you know, yeah, it's three seconds, but then you got to do it again. Yeah. And it's it's like real Every hard. Play. You got to move a three hundred pound man. From point A to point B, that's what mm-hmm. I learned that phrase. When I first came here, some guy was like, if you want to play O-line, you got to be ready to move uh, someone else's will uh, from point A to point B. Yeah. It's like, sign me up. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could do that. I could, I could, I could do that, I think. Um, but Professional people that, that's, what, that's why I say, like, the, the, the protection, the helmets, the pads, they don't help anything. Right. I mean, you said last week it's like getting hit by a car. Yeah, it's definitely what it is. Yeah. It's the mini car crash every three seconds, mm-hmm. every forty seconds. Yeah, it's terrible. And um, you know, I I mean, I didn't play at the. I'll be honest now, I didn't play at the top level of rugby. I get that. Yeah, but fuck, I mean, dude, it's like compared to like the the rugby league I played, like how I felt after a game. 
compared to how yeah, which how one did I you feel, feel worse after? I feel ter- I feel terrible after an NFL game. Wow. After an NFL game. Also, also older, you know what I mean, with age. How old are you? Uh, <laughs> 20, 26. Take a little. 26. He is You're perfectly like 26? <laughs> yes. 26. Jesus. No. He came over here. What were you, 20 I was 20. Yeah. yeah, I was 20 when I came. Yeah. God damn. 26 old or young. I can't tell the, the, got the whole That's world young, in your hands. That's very young. The whole world in your hands. I mean, I still remember one of the biggest things that you had to learn was literally in we kind of the NFL frowns on this, but using your head. Yeah. Like you have a helmet and like yeah. oh. actually like getting down and baby. striking Get somebody. triangle. But yeah, dude, <laughs> dude, I have a story. <clears throat> I got a story. Because oh, this, this motherfucker, uh, my rookie year, I didn't know how to, again, use my helmet. I didn't know how to get into a double team. And he goes, okay. you got to use your helmet. And so. You kept hitting it like off yeah, to the side. To the side. Because right. that's how we get taught to tackle. Mm-hmm. Like you got to, you got to tuck your head to the side in rugby. So like, you know, when I come in here for a double team, I naturally just go like that. Just because I'm bit, uh, used to doing <laughs> that. Yeah, it's routine. Uh, Muscle he, memory. He made me uh, hold the bag, and he had uh, Stefan Wisniewski. Shout out to Wiz. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Wiz. 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 Him and Wisniewski hit a uh, hit a double team on me, and I and he just he had but the <laughs> fuck out of me, and he said that's how you hit a double team. <laughs> rung, rung you, rung you a little bit. <laughs> rung me a little bit, but it fucking worked. After that day, that's all I thought about yeah. was get my head in there, and I, and I naturally. Just fit behind the block easily. Yeah, nice. We also they, way, they coach, teach us not to do Jay. that anymore, so we, we don't do that anymore. We don't do it we anymore. Do no, that's how it that. That's how it works. Especially not on the brotherly show. All right, before we keep going, we need to shout out our sponsor. That's Prize Picks. Pick that's right. Prize Picks is a skill based real money daily fantasy sports game, and it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And with basketball season now here, you can pick combo projections across Ooh. football and basketball from the specials league. Oh, that mm. shit sounds fun. Pick a prize, any prize. A league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You you can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy app. And now for the portion of this ad read labeled personal experience to be read by talent outside of Travis and Jason Kelsey, because we are current active NFL players and cannot participate with Prize Picks, but you know who can? That's right. Our intern, Brandon! Brandon, you talented Come on, intern, intern. Brandon. Come You're, on in here. All right. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, 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 sorry. There's talent outside of us. It's you. That's right. All right. That's no, I'm, I'm, listen, just came up just short of my NFL career. I've always said that. <laughs> Fair enough. It was just a, just a better combine showing away. All right, get out of here. I'm going to do some picks real Perfect. quick and we'll get back to Jordan. But here's what I'm thinking. The game that I'm going to watch the most of this week, Eagles, Cowboys, but I'm going a little different direction. I think they're going to, they're going to double down on stopping AJ Brown. So I'm going to go Devonte Smith yards, and I'm going to go Dallas Goddard yards. Um, that's my logic, but Price Picks has got a bunch of other options for you. Take a look. I'm going to get the guys back in here and get out. All right. Hopefully, our intern uh, slash not intern did you guys right. Um, and if you want to get into daily fantasy this season, go to PricePicks.com slash New Heights and use the code New Heights for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash new heights, code new heights, for daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, if you know one thing about me, it's that on occasion there are giant dogs behind me. And you've probably been wondering just what the hell it is that I feed those things. And the answer is the farmer's dog. Yeah, I mean, that's clear. It's it's easy. You can see how big they are. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and uh, made from real healthy ingredients to even human food safety standards. And my wife prefers that they eat this over the gophers in the backyard. Yeah. It's the best option for dogs at all stages of life because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real healthy food. They also send the food uh, pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy dog food at thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. Plus, you get free shipping. How about that? Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash new heights to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. All right, now Jason, let's get to uh, oh. let's get to our version of what an interview looks like. We yeah, know what the fuck that means. We're gonna start way back on how you got here and a little bit of your background. Um, as 
everyone watching now knows, at least to this point, you started off as a rugby player in Australia where you grew up. Um, before you ever considered the NFL as a possibility, um, how were you first discovered? How did NFL find out about Jordan Malata? Yeah. Um, so when I was 20, I played in the under 20s for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Mm-hmm. And I uh, came off the bench. I played about maybe 11 games. So I wasn't a starter. And, you know, I had to pay my way to fund rugby as well. Okay. Because um, mm. I wasn't getting paid much in rugby. I was getting $200 uh, for a win and $100 for a loss. Oh, and wow. I, oh, But I wow. had to play that game. Yeah. So that was just my contract. Well, some of the guys had different contracts. Uh, so I did odd jobs, construction, like scaffold building, stage building. Like I did whatever I could to help, you know, just help pay pay bills and to survive. Okay. Um, after that season, um, I felt like I had a pretty good season, like 11 game stretch. I was like, you know, I got down to uh, uh, 310 and, you know, I, was, I felt great. I could move. A lot of the football, a lot of the rugby teams didn't agree. So uh, my agency at the time, they knew all these connections, the NFL player pathway program people. Sure. And they reached out to them and sure enough, they invited me to go work out. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I just knew I was going to uh, LA to work out for a program yeah. uh, that might get you into the NFL yeah. uh, P squad. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. It worked out. Yeah. And- I made the program. Did everybody, like everybody in Australia, your teammates, your family, did everybody think you were a little crazy trying to like pursue the NFL? For sure. I mean, I never watched the sport. I, I would watch the Super Bowls, but half the time I watched them was because of the halftime performances. Yeah. Like Ooh, legit. Right now. And Ooh, um, who's, your fa- who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? You got to know. The who's favorite halftime performance? Yeah. yeah. Who was uh, the one that you kind of remember? It was, uh, I mean, my favorite was probably uh, Beyonce and Bruno Mars and Coldplay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That was a good one. Like, that was a good one. Well played. My missus doesn't like the fact that Coldplay was there. Because she's like, because she, she felt like on the same level as Bruno Mars and Beyonce, kind of yeah. was like weird. So you, are you down? Are you bashing Coldplay? No, I love Nikki. Coldplay. <laughs> Nikki. Nikki. Maybe we should cut this out. We should cut this part out. I fucking love Coldplay. I was like, man, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This is fucking amazing. This is fucking amazing. Are you kidding me? I was like, they belong there. I was like, and then I started missing. I was like, they carried the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> but they carry the whole show. This is Beyonce character. I was, like, what? <laughs> I was like, dude, come on. So you just talked about this, and I'm actually curious to learn more about this because I know it exists, but I don't know all the ins and outs. Uh, there's a program that the NFL utilizes for foreign international players called the International Player Pathways. Is that what it's called? Yep. And it's designed to discover talents like yourself that are not Americans and give them an opportunity to play in the league. I think there's actually like a, isn't there like a, you can have like a player on your roster. That's your roster spot. Yeah. But it doesn't count to like three years. It doesn't count. Well, unless he's on the 53. It does count for a 53 man, but a practice squad guy, you're allowed essentially an extra practice squad guy. If he's a part of this program, right? Yes. All right. Um, yes, that's pretty much it. IPP. Okay. Um, I actually don't need to do any explanation. You explained it really well. well. How does I guess like how do like they have these in each country? Like, how do you um, find out about that? How do you submit to like even? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And is it like a combine? Like you go there and run times? So yeah. <clears throat> so the IPP, just for short, yes. um, has scouts that they'll send out and coaches that they will go to these different countries. The whole point of the program is when I was going through it was yeah. to bridge the connection uh, from the NFL to in the international uh, market. Sure. And by doing that, they can select somebody who is either a standout in another sport or an up and coming, you know, athletic freak. <clears throat> um, and then through specimen, use them as the model <laughs> um, to kind of bridge that connection that the NFL yeah. wants. Uh, so get, the, I mean, get a hometown they, kid in the league. Yeah, ex- exactly. And I think that's a great initiative for the league. Sure. Yeah. Um, you're really Makes genius. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> really genius. If you think about it, sure. um, the rich keep getting richer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to be honest, like, I think the, the way that IPP is, is run is 
is amazing because they have their, inca- their coaching staff and, and scouts that they fly out to these countries to work these kids out mm-hmm. for the program that takes place stateside. So used to take when I when I went there, it took place at IMG Academy, um, and then I, and then they went to an Arizona gym. Yeah, last year I think it was might uh, still be IMG. They're they're all over the place. Yeah, they're know, everywhere. I think they're back at IMG this year. Of the, the new year coming. The one in Florida, um, yeah, the one yeah. in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody thinks I went, I went there because of this program. So I just say that I'm a graduate of IMG High School. <laughs> <laughs> at, at 20 but years you old, already, you are, yeah, you're already 20 years old when this happened. So, what was the first thing they had you do? Like work out, like coaches <clears throat> coaching you up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much it. They just they did, we did the 40, uh, like a normal combine. Yeah, workout. Okay, and I think I, I think for bench press, I had like. 20 and I was like, that's pretty good. They're like, ah, I'm not for your position. I was like, what position? Yeah. We're thinking of, you know, letting you play a uh, left tackle. I said, uh, what's that? Did you think you were running back? <laughs> so I, I thought I was going to play running back. So they said left tackle. And I was like, okay, that <laughs> sounds like, it sounds like something else. Oh my uh, God. I was like, okay. They're like, have you seen the movie, the blind side? And I said, <laughs> I, I said, point. fuck off, because they called me Big Mike in high school, and I, I knew straight away. No way. I remember. They used, to call, so <laughs> they used to call me Big Mike in high school because of that big oaf that played Michael Orr. Oh, gosh. A big oaf, and I was called Big Mike. So as soon as he said the blind side, I remembered, oh, that's what the left tackle is. Yeah. The blind side. That's too well, funny, man. <laughs> so what was the first time you found out all the positions? That was all at ING? Yeah. And- Learning. You do they teach you the positions like like broad terminology Ooh, is like stuff, is that yeah. where you learn like what an overfront is or like, yeah that's where I learned all of that yeah we were and basic you're learning stuff. that how long before you were a member of the Philadelphia Eagles did so, you know like what a three technique was um so 2018 January January 14 I think it was yeah 2018 January 14 January 14 2018 was the first day I went to IMG and that was the start of the academy and we were there until March 31st so for that during those three months oh, wow. mm-hmm. All right. it was six days a week so six yeah. days six 12 hour days in a row and was just working out combine work and then film film study position yeah. study yeah. and it was just repeat on repeat and repeat and I think probably about Maybe a month in, I kind of like understood, okay, three tech, five tech gaps. Yeah. You know, like position, basic position, like reading the plays and stuff I could understand. And then, yeah. And I was like, oh, this isn't, this doesn't seem too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was wrong. I was wrong. In that three month time frame, how many NFL teams, like when did Stout like come out? Yeah. Like when did that happen? Um, Stout is the offensive line coach for the Eagles for all you 90 percenters that aren't aware. Sorry, go ahead. I went home after after the pro day, March 31st. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually March 28th. went home. I came back April 1st. Then I had my own pro day. Okay. And before that pro day, I met up with Stout the day before. Yeah. And the first time I met him, I don't know if I should tell the story. Did I have told you the story? Of, I missed his I call. I Stout. Okay. I missed his call. And you guys had just That's won the Super Bowl. Our, yeah, yeah. And he left me a voicemail, and I wish I fucking saved the voicemail. I shit you not. He ended it with, yeah, just give me a ring. It's Coach Stout. Da, da, da. Okay, that's Coach Stout, Super Bowl 52 champion. No! Oh! <laughs> I swear to God. Just I swear to God. I swear. He just threw it out there. <laughs> Jeff, I was this like, is Jeff Stalin. You might like, want to give me a call back. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's saying. He's like, yeah, give me a call back because, you know, I'm about to pull up at the school and I would like to get with you before tomorrow's pro day. Yeah. I want to teach you two jet. Mm hmm. So then I called him back and we organized it, met up with him in the classroom. And when I met him at the car, I was like, oh, this guy's such a sweet, lovely old man. Like, you know, <laughs> went to the classroom, <laughs> man, turned on the, flip the switch and it was game on. Yeah. I, he was quizzing me. Like I, I, I was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, what? <laughs> Brother, I don't even know what you mean by like the safety, yeah. like rotating all that. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so he's teaching me the progressions of two jet protection on the grease board. Yeah. Yeah. And after it, he goes, all right, make sure you, you take a photo with your mind. Yeah. 
and then he rubbed out the board, and then that was the end of the meeting. I ran back up into that classroom. Thank God the grease board marks were still there because I just traced out everything. No way. I traced Let's out fucking everything. fucking go. He's a Bruh. flanker. Let's I, fucking go, man. So I'm talking I traced about out Jordan. everything. The six yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Took a picture, rubbed that shit out, went home and studied it. The next day, uh, the before my pro day, again, met up with the – this time it was like three coaches in there. Yeah. And um, – he told me, "Hey, teach me two jet protection." I said, yeah. <laughs> "Easy, easy." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, dude, I, I mean, like, you, t- you teach me one, so you can teach you teach me something else." Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get the answers to the test. I'll man. teach you three jet protection. <laughs> <laughs> the camera flipped the photo, so yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> well, the camera flipped the photo, so I can teach you three jet. So, so you had never seen really football outside of the Super Bowl. Didn't know anything about the sport. You go to a completely different country at the age of 20. You go into a program for three months and you are hoping to get (laughs) your shot at the NFL. What is, I mean, dude, it's insane. What is your family saying? What are your friends? What are your rugby teammates saying? Like, were people like, oh, yeah, you should definitely go try and make it to the NFL? Like, yeah, how did that? What did everybody think of you doing this um, before you got drafted? I mean, I'll I'll start it with my family. Okay, um, my family didn't want me to do it. It's just because they were looking out for me. They yeah. thought, you know, you didn't, you don't know anything about the sport. Why are you trying yeah. to go over there and you think you can pick up something and master it? And, you know, it's pretty audacious. I, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. Like, I get, <laughs> I get. It's like you know, I was like, oh, look how naive of me to really think that I can go over here and just learn the sport. But I. For me, I was like, oh, well, you know, it's three months. I'm 20 years old. If it doesn't work out, I'll just come back here, pick up rocks, and go play for free at rugby. You know, like, <laughs> fucking build stages Good and point. just, yeah. you know, I could just, just do back, that. Just come back and do what I'm doing right now. I just, after a year of doing what I did, yeah. I, didn't want, I didn't want to keep doing that. Yeah. So I was like, I just want to try something, try something new. I was getting paid. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I, for I, what? I, was, I think me and another rugby player. No, actually, I'm allowed. Let me. Okay. I was paid. I was paid to come, you know, I was compensated, I should say. Okay. For those three months. Yeah. Um literally they I may have lied to them about how much I was making for the compensation. <laughs> yeah. it definitely wasn't All right now. That's my, that's my fucking kind of guy right there. That's my I'm fucking kind of guy. Flanker. Flanking. Um, but you know, they compensated me and at first my family was like, it's not worth it. Like you why would you do that? Why would you give up on your rugby dreams? And I just honestly just couldn't be asked working to pay, keep paying my way and my family. That's man, my, my, that's my real, parents man. raised us to be real workers and, and hard workers and to follow through on what you start on something that you start. And so for me, when I said I was going to try this out, they were like, you're crazy. So the way I grew up, you had to get permission from your parents. So I, I asked my parents for permission. They shut me down right away. Yeah. Waited a couple of weeks. I asked again. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they got the blessing. Yes. Got the blessing. So, yeah, man, that's crazy. That but, is um, wild. I didn't ask Ed Kelsey for anything. I was just yeah, like, I'm, I'm about to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about to do this. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, Dad wouldn't have. Uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't ask Dad if I could take the car when I was in middle school. I just fucking did it. When you're only going a couple <laughs> blocks away. He's a little bit less opinionated. <laughs> that's that's good point. It's a good point. It's a good point. It's a good point. That path to the draft or path to the uh, to the NFL was absolutely wild. Why don't we get to some uh, draft day stories? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Let's jump into the the NFL draft experience. Jordan, you had a lot of uh, doubters during your draft uh, process because uh, you know how new you were to the sport and everything, um, and you wanting to be a running back and not really in on playing left tackle. When the draft <laughs> did come around, did you think you were going to get selected? Like, were you like, yeah, no, I'm like one of the best athletes in this thing? which is what you are. <laughs> um, no, man. I, I, for real, I got invited to go to the draft in Dallas. Oh, wow. And um, cool. I guess NFL Films wanted to just capture the whole thing of like the potential NFL, uh, of they always drafted. know. They always know. They knew Jason's documentary was going to be the best well, thing Amazon scripted, Prime's Travis, ever you seen. If <laughs> 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 anybody gets a brother, it's all this guy right here, man. I yeah, I mean, day two. I actually flew out there on day two 
And then, like, at the end of day two, they told me, like, you're probably going to, if you were to get drafted, you would probably be a day three. And I was like, listen, I'm just living it up right now. I said, you guys are paying for all my meals, paying for my, my room, my travel. I said, this Where is else cool. You want me to go? I said, dude. <laughs> I was like, and you tell me I just have to talk into a camera? I was like, dude, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, and then, the you know, day three happened, and uh, waiting around all day was, was crazy. And I really didn't think I was going to get drafted. I was just there for the, I was just there for the the ride. Sure, you know, enjoy the ride. Um, it was surreal though, because when they say, "Oh, you're gonna get random calls from teams," and sure enough, like these area codes would pop up of towns I'd never heard of before in my life, and like what Green Bay? Uh, <laughs> it was Ohio. It was Ohio. Cleveland. Cleveland. Cincinnati? Ohio. Oh, I can't remember what it West was. Lake? Might have been Westlake. Yeah. And you know, pick it up. They go, oh, "Is your agent there?" Mm-hmm. I was still with my rugby agent. Yeah. And uh. Yeah, he was getting a couple of calls saying like, uh, this team wants you, they, they want you undrafted. They, they, if you don't go drafted, they're going to reach out. And in my head, I'm like, well, I can still go on the program. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still technically still part of the program. And if I don't get drafted, I just get slotted onto a P-Squad. Yeah, somebody's going to use a P-Squad. Exactly. Squad. Right. And uh, I almost went to Pittsburgh. Dude, I mean, I can I, see it, it. it fits. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're like big guys, yeah. Yeah, sure. almost yeah. went to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, I found that out uh, probably Were they going to draft years ago. you or? Uh, the, through the pathways. Through the pathways. Okay, yeah. all right. Through the pathways. But Jeff Stoutland said not so fast. Not so yeah. fucking <laughs> fast. Whoever made yeah. the call. Whoever made the call. Brandon Brown was the one who found me. Really? Brandon Brown no way. was the one who was at the pro day. Uh, actually, yeah, at our combine day. At our combine day with the five of us. Yeah. We joined a local uh, combine in Tampa, and we were at the Bucks facility. That's where they hosted it. Got it. <clears throat> and Brandon Brown was one of the scouts there. So shout out to you, that? Brandon Brown, BB. He, he was like, "I got it. This guy's huge and fast. Let's <laughs> take it. I got the guy." Hey, uh, is this uh, big ass? This guy's three hundred and ten guy. pounds, body fat ten percent. Uh, <laughs> uh, t- runs oh. like Jerome Bettis. I was, uh, was, was three forty, guys- but probably three forty okay, when I ran it. All right. Uh, Just my, a fucking I, specimen. I, I know I ran at five flat, but uh, haters will say five ten. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. It's still moving haters will say five ten. Still moving right? for it's that, yeah, moving. that body of mass. Well, the Eagles found a way to draft you the two hundred and thirty third overall pick. Um, when you got the call of, uh, being drafted, like who was the one that spoke to you? Was it Stoutland? It, it was Brandon Brown. The he was the one who called me first, and he told me. Um, hey, uh, our GM would like to speak to you. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, I was like, okay. And then, Did he say our Super Bowl champion GM? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he's going to kill me if you guys leave that in there. Uh, it's 1,000% getting in there. I know for a fact, Stouty, I love you, but I know that's what you left because I, the impression that was left upon me, I was just like, wow, this guy's really – a big deal. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> this guy's real, the real deal. He's the real deal. I like I've never heard of anybody introduce themselves like that <laughs> and then say goodbye like that. Like, am I, am I in the wrong here? No, no. no this is hilarious. It's yes. spot on. You, you're spot on with this. This so, is great. So Brandon's on the phone. Brandon's he on the phone. He's going to hand it to Howie, the GM. Ha- then, then it's Howie. Yeah. And I start crying. I just start mm-hmm. crying because I'm like, fuck, like so many emotions. And Hell I just yeah, couldn't man. believe that. Like, you know, I understood what it meant to be drafted because of how we were coached during the program and the privilege of even just being on a P squad, yeah. uh, having the opportunity to play in the NFL and represent the NFL and the country that you're from. Yeah. Um, and so like, I guess the past three months going six days straight, one day Hell off, yeah, dude. you know, for three months <clears throat> felt like a long ass training camp. Having to get the blessing from your family just to do yeah. it. Like this is, that's, I yeah, mean, and even a that. an unbelievable story, man. You had, to have, you had to have a participation slip signed by your parents to go to the yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's like, that's I only got that from I mean, fucking. It's because it's the Samoan, it's the Samoan, <laughs> the, the, the culture, man. That's, yeah. You got to ask your parents. If you're not married, then you have to ask your parents mm. but for permission. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's just so we, you, you move out of the house. It's the law of the Samoans. It's the law. It's just Samoan culture, man. Yeah. You just it's the way I was brought up. So you talk to Howie. You, he tells <clears> you to draft. Did you talk to Stout at all? Talk to Stout. Day? Yep. What talk to you? Doug, and then I talk to Stout. Doug then Doug Stout. P. Doug then Stout. Yeah, right. Dougie P. Here we go. Did Stout leave you with anything? What did he just? He just come in here, and be ready to roll. He's like, you, know, you got to be hungry. You got to stay hungry. But you know, we're so excited to have you, and uh, you know. 
Did he do the hungry dogs run faster? Yeah, hungry dogs run faster. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you get drafted. You come to Philadelphia, and you enter in your words, as Travis just put, Jeff Stoutland University. I mean, he has to be he has to be the mentor that you were looking for, man. I mean, outside of telling the Eagles, you know, hungry dogs run faster, and that was the mentality that they had, and like catapulted them into the than to win in that Super Bowl the year before you got drafted. I mean, to have one of the best, you know, offensive lineman minds or coaches, you know, that had to be a freaking big mentor for you. For sure, man. Um, I didn't really understand, again, what I was really walking into when I got drafted and when I came to Philly and just that little snippet of Stout and how passionate he is, you know, when when he conducted that interview with me was – wasn't enough for me to really understand the kind of person he was. Really hard coach, a really passionate coach, really detailed coach. Um, but at the end of the day, the man just gives a fuck about yeah. the player and the sport. And man, it, it was it was crazy. It was crazy walking into that, that locker room because he had, you know, obviously we had Kells. Uh, Jason Peters, Brandon Brooks. JP. Um, Lane Johnson, Wisniewski. I mean, yeah. Isaac Somalo and, and Big V. You Big know, that, V! That was, that was the locker room I was able to be a part of. Oh, shit, I can't forget about Chance Warmack too, man. Big Chance. So yeah, I was very privileged to walk into a room of very experienced guys um, and then also have a coach like Stout uh, that brought me along along the way. Hell yeah, man. Well, hats off, brother. So you go from Australia to Philly. What was the most extreme Philly thing that uh, that you're all in on or like was a huge shock for you? Um, culture Philly thing. Like oh. how average the cheesesteaks are? Or? <laughs> oh, shit. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do that, man. I fucking get it every time I'm in Philly. <laughs> no, so it's I, I would say uh, you that want definitely, real barbecue, come to Philly? I thought I thought I grew up in a in a town that, that was really diehard about sports. Uh, it's different here. It's Dude, different in Philly. It it's is way different, different in Philly. Than, yeah. Uh, and I thought the town I grew up in was diehard. You know, yeah. I thought we were Me too. diehard fans, Me too. passionate. Yeah. No, nah. uh, Philly it. Philly culture here is – I don't think it can be matched. Maybe it can be matched. Maybe in England with the soccer. You know, just yeah. to be honest, yeah. soccer there is pretty big. Sure. So, How much better is the food in Philadelphia than Australia? Did I not word that right? No. <laughs> no. I just looked at you because I'm like, you're setting me up, you piece of shit. You're setting me up. <laughs> you know, you know That's why I looked at things. you like that. You know how he does things. Uh, oh, um, gosh. Man, the food the food in Philly's really good. Yeah. Really, really good. Um the food back home's okay. It's it's okay. It's okay. I grew up with it, so it's like Yeah, you I do food. miss I do miss uh Middle Eastern food. What that's what I grew up around. What's a popular sandwich in Australia? Um You guys have your meat a pies. Popular sandwich. It's not a What's sandwich. Better? I mean it's a pie it's a meat pies on, on it's a sandwich. Essentially, okay, fine. You guys have meat what's better? Meat pies or cheese sticks? You're such a motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, this guy. You, you can't win. Hey, you can't win what? with this dude, man. <laughs> the Turns you into a politician. Like, it's either this way or that way. Yeah, no, you uh, already know. I, uh, I, mean, I, I would say. You like both of them. I do. I do. Yeah. I can't pick one. Yeah, okay. I'm going to pick one. I'm being simple. Right. Fair enough. But you have a food truck that's a. <laughs> <laughs> He's yes. sick. Yes, I do have a. a it's not my food truck. But uh, yes, I do. I am an okay. ambassador for okay. Gadego May. So. Yes. Yes. All right. What's one Philly thing that you still don't understand that you you know you're just can't get behind or you just don't get it? Um, I'd probably say like the driving here. I can't. I don't understand the driving in Philly. It might be something in, in like, very controversial. In, in I, I'm life. very. I'm a very like reserved driver. I don't like to use my horn. Yeah. Mm -mm. Is that what you got to call it? Horn, right? I, I don't like hear, to use my horn. I hear it America, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, I hear Dude, I, the, as soon as the light turns green, gang, yeah. gang, I'm like, bro, what? Yeah. yeah. Well, those things are moving time. fast, man. If you're three cars back, man, you, don't yeah. want to, you get stuck at a fucking another light. The one that pisses me off that happens a lot in Philly, uh, I mean, everybody's in a hurry on the East Coast, I feel like. I cannot stand when I get to a light and somebody in the left turn lane decides to jump the light and turn left like as soon as it turns go, that one like not it makes not you want to hit him, doesn't it? Doesn't it make one you want to hit him? One of these days, I'm going to do it because I don't care. I'll take the let's, I'll take the repair bill. I'm going <laughs> to. What really do you mean the insurance. repair bill? They're not they're not allowed to do that. Well, either way, I don't know what would be yield. a fault, but I don't care. I'm going to ruin the value of your vehicle. 
I'm, I'm going to make you pay for not respecting the rule of law and the uh, order of operations here at the at the at the junction of where we're at. It really bothers me. It bothers me. I don't blame. I don't blame you, bro. Shout out to another one of our sponsors, State Farm. That's right. State Farm helps you score an affordable price when you bundle home and auto insurance with the personal price plan. That's right. The personal price plan lets you call the plays so you can choose the home and auto insurance coverage that fits your needs at a price you can afford. And bundling home and auto? <laughs> That's a pro move. Pro and move. Just another way to save with the personal price plan. So talk to your State Farm agent today and learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on ratings that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings and eligibility vary by state. We need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking during the show all the time, and that's Accelerator Active Energy Drinks. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been looking for something with zero sugar that mm. gives you sustained energy, gets the of metabolism course. going, you know it. it gives you the enhanced focus you need to record a podcast. Fuck yeah. Play a football game. Take mm -hmm. care of three kids. Oh, uh, well, I'm not doing that much right now. Well, if you do, you got to check out Accelerator Active Energy. Jason, what's, a, what's, what's your favorite flavor? What, what are you over there sipping on? I've been sipping on this cherry limeade uh, for a little oh, bit now. so good. That's a good one. I'm over here on this peach Pretty paradise. Dark. I've been in paradise all day. Whatever flavor you prefer, you can find Accelerator Active Energy available on Amazon. Let's talk about those first days with the Eagles, man. And uh, this is the most important question I'm going to ask you. And um, we are kind of please do not hold back on this. Right. Um, there have been some great answers for this. And I expect nothing less from you, Jordan. Um, what was your first impression on Jason Kelsey? Should I go upstairs? So you can be up there. <laughs> um, I, it, took me, it took me a little bit to match that Jason Kelsey was the guy that gave the, the parade speech. speech. Ooh, so damn, it took me a little bit to put two and two together. Damn, you, that's so good, I, man. At first, I was like, oh, Jason Kelsey's just the, the center for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good bloke. And then the more I was there, I was like, wait a minute. That's the guy in the fucking suit. Look at that guy. <laughs> wait a minute. I was like, oh, this guy's a fucking legend from the speech. Fucking Philly. This guy's a fucking legend. Uh, but soon enough, uh, that, that legendary, uh, I found out real quick uh, how uh, – how serious this man was about football, but he knew when to turn it on and turn it off. So that was fun. <laughs> oh, Getting yeah. to, to see him and Stout. I thought this man was uh, Einstein when I first got there because when I was learning the plays and sitting in the, sitting in the classroom, and just the only two voices I heard was Stout and Kels yeah. and the occasional whiz. <laughs> and nice. the occasional, yeah. occasional yeah. whiz. Yeah. Mm. Those are most of the talkers in the movie. <laughs> You, 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 JP, and those guys would talk to you, but after, yeah, more after the, like, yes, after Big the fact. V's not saying nothing in the meeting. No, nah. but yeah. I'd go up to them and be like, "Hey, wait, what did he mean by, yeah. by this?" Yeah. I felt like I couldn't go up to Kills because I was like, "They're on the same page. Well, he's on the same page with Stout. <laughs> yeah. They have their own language. I don't know if they're speaking English anymore." <laughs> That's like, good shit. This was, this was crazy. So in my head, I'm like, "Man, this guy's like a genius. This guy, <laughs> this guy invented football. Like Jesus Christ." That was my first impression. And this is coming from somebody who didn't know anything. I'm this sitting there like, man. He's a know it all, man. And I knew I wasn't crazy because I could see the other rookies, like, one of them was sleeping. And <laughs> <laughs> the other rookies were sleeping. Okay, yeah, you already well, know who, else, who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, and then, like, the other two are looking at me like, do you understand what they're saying? I'm like, bro, you're asking me? I just got here like three months ago. <laughs> like, why are you asking me if I understand? <laughs> like, this was it. Was Seems like you got your me. wits about you, man. But that was my that was my first impression of, of Kels because I was it was it was really this guy's a genius. Fucking Einstein, golly, he's just a Standard. fucking just a dummy trying to answer a no dumb question, man. <laughs> uh, you did you feel like you fit into the O line room? I, I don't think the the world understands how unique an offensive line room Whoa, is, man. It, what do you mean by that? What it's like some of like the most you know, gosh, how, what do I mean by that? <laughs> Like it's not a, it's not a. I'm not taking, I'm not poking You're not taking at you a guys. Dig. But no, I'm not digging at you guys by any means, man. It really is a unique like chemistry. Um, it's a unique way of life. Like I know offensive linemen that will put in, like, 
a, a delivery order before an away game. Like we're in Denver and at noon, knowing that he's going to get home at 10 p.m. and is going to be hungry, yeah. we'll put in a delivery order I mean, and delivery it'll just be ass. sitting I'm, on his I'm front porch. Like, yeah. like old linemen are so unique uh, that I, I, I really can't even explain it. I'm going to have to really get down deep too. But did you, yeah. you, did you see and like feel how different the old line room was from everybody else when you first got there? Yeah, man. I, I was just a fly on the wall. I was just trying to soak up. And, and learn everything I could, even yeah. just about the culture, because I didn't, you know, the locker room from rugby to uh, the NFL was way different. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> was oh, way yeah. different. In terms of what? How? In terms of uh, chemistry. Um, in terms of chemistry. Uh, was it better in the r- rugby or better in the NFL? T- t- Jason, you can't ask him questions like that. Stop trying to just <laughs> – you're, you're making him shit on somebody. Okay. Let me see if I can phrase it. So I know – like, is it, was it more of like a, it was more, it was more family? cohesive. Yes. Like family, like brotherhood, Where? the uh, whole locker room was NFL. Uh, rugby rugby. Okay. And, but that's because we don't have 50 fucking 53 people in a, on a roster. Sure. So, you know, we had like at Matt, at we had probably 26 to 30 players yeah. and that was the full team. And are there like, like position reserves. meetings when it's a rugby or is like everybody kind of meeting together? Everyone's kind of meeting together. Yeah. So it's yeah. like more of like in football, yeah. everybody gets like segmented into their, yeah. Their, yeah. their their task or their position. So I can see that. So hundred percent. Right. So yeah, that was like that was a big you know thing for me was like, oh I was like, you know, they had like everybody had clicks or groups. Yeah. But you know, rugby there was just the one group. It wasn't like yeah. That. I think maybe group. that's why you I feel like you more than a lot of other guys aren't like clicky. Like you make it a point to hang out with everybody. Yeah. And to like you know I think that that's one of the like you're a natural leader in in regards to that like you talk to everybody in the game offense defense like i feel like you do a really really good job of that maybe that's from that rugby background i, I, I get caught up in like yeah. art, art what we're doing yeah a lot of times like, yeah like, whenever i look up maybe maybe like, i should sit down on the bench more often yeah. but well, yeah. you'll drive to the <laughs> Stop. after him the other day the other game because he's like, where's Jordan at? He's over there conversing with guys, <laughs> trying to make corrections in the middle of the game. I think you should keep being uh, who you are, but definitely make sure you clear him with Stout. Yeah, yeah. I did this last game. I did. I was like, Stout, I'm just yeah. going down there to get Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. I, I made sure I read it by him this time because I didn't want to get yelled at. Where, where Jordan? Where? Someone get Jordan. Where is he at? You always wandering off. I can. Hear you gotta it. sit down and get the corrections. You gotta. We gotta. When I'm talking about it, you gotta listen. Anyway, sorry. So when you when you get to the Eagles, you don't know anything about football. You're learning it stout with you. Mm-hmm. But we already talked. There's a lot of really, really experienced veteran guys in the room. Who who were the guys that took you really under their wing the most in your first even couple years? Like maybe not even just your first year. Like yeah. who are the guys that went out of their way to explain the game and to help you? Um when it comes to the game, definitely JP and Lane. Yeah. Uh but for every day just how I was doing and, and making sure that my mentors are okay. Big V. Big V. Big V, man. Big V. Yeah. I love Big V, man. He, yeah. he is one of the best mentors and friends that I ever had. Um, I mean, you took me under your wing, too, with that headbutt. Yeah. I don't know if that's under a wing, but. Uh, it almost sent me to the uh, <laughs> the wing in the hospital because. <laughs> <laughs> Well the emergency wing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Big V uh, was a big mentor to me, uh, just off the, off the field stuff. And, you know, whenever I didn't understand anything that Stout was going on about, um, I would go to V and he would just dumb it down for me. And nice. then when it came to technique stuff, JP and Lane would always talk to me about technique and teach me and coach me through it. Um, he said, even Wiz and Kels, yeah. uh, when it came to technique stuff, everybody, that was the beauty of the – the O line room. That's that, what I'm saying. It's so unique. You don't get that in every room, man. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I learned. Was is that's what I learned. Is the O line room maybe the most similar to the the rugby? Yeah. Kind of culture for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. What about the tight ends? They, I mean, we we add them in every once. I think Dallas. I don't know yeah. about Travis. He's kind of more of a receiver. I'm a flanker, man. <laughs> I'm just I'm going with the wind, dog. Okay. I'll see you guys are, on the honestly, other side. Man. Honestly, you and Travis are very similar. Trav is always talking to all the Oh yeah. Uh, I'm talking to I, yeah. I, I am think never on you, the fucking bench. And yeah. Melvin fuck he does not love that, but I am never <laughs> on the bench. It's like, yeah, they were just in the 
a four three cover cover four, and I'm just sitting there like I just yeah I saw it. I was there. I was, I was on just the field. Out there. I was out there. I saw it all. <laughs> <laughs> what, am I, what are we reviewing? Do you have something for me? I got, yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. What's next? Okay, we got those coming up. Nice. I love that. Perfect. Tell three, <laughs> down me up. Um, since we're talking your first years in the in the league, though, um, we always ask this to all of our guests that play in the league. Uh, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Great question. Um, training camp, rookie year. Um, going to do a one on one, and I'm versing uh, Stephen Means. Oh, yeah, you already know. And that man uh, sat me down Heavy Heavy back. Well, uh, I got bull rushed. <laughs> I get out of my stance, and I don't know how I got there, and I get to my spot. I'm like, oh, I'm about to throw my hands, and then I'm looking up at this guy. <laughs> Son, he just, just, oh, my God, headbutt me. And, well, I shouldn't say headbutt. He bull rushed me. But, yeah. man, that was my welcome to the NFL moment because I was, yeah. I Felt was, helpless. Was, it was probably one of the first times you had ever been, like, I want to say manhandled, but, yeah. like, somebody put you, took you on a ride. Yeah, Stephen Means did it real early. And, uh, he did do a lot of guys. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what I learned. And then the next rookie comes up. He did it to the next rookie. I'm like, yeah. I'm sitting oh, okay. there. This I'm guy's a machine. <laughs> uh, I, was like, I was like, hey. This yeah, guy's for, just good. I was like, for a guy who uh, you know, just started playing, I was like, oh, yeah, at least at least the guy's been playing his whole life. He's put on his house, dude. <laughs> um, I would say that was my welcome. That or either getting blindsided, uh, my – Fourth preseason game, my first oh, year. Oh, I forgot about that. And they threw, we threw a pick against the Jets. It was yeah. at home, and I I'm they had an outlawed blindside like block shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, oh wow, it still wasn't a oh penalty. yeah yeah yeah. And um, Jets, as long as they didn't go he ahead, just, helmet to helmet. He doesn't. He didn't know. I didn't know. The I did not know. Have you had on a swivel? Have you had on a swivel? <laughs> no, I just had eyes on the ball. And Frankie Luvu, <laughs> shout out to Frankie, Frankie Luvu. Just leveled me. That yeah. was the first time I'd ever been leveled like that. Like, what the fuck was that, dude? I was just like, fucking- what, I, exactly what happened. I was like, what the fuck just happened? That's what it used to be, <laughs> bro. It was chaos oh, and interception. That's fucking, that's fucking, that's, that's fucking football. In, that's football. In rugby, kids. in rugby, they're not allowed to block. Yeah, you can't leave with your shoulder. But are you allowed to rugby. block at all? You can, you can wrap. Like when you hit. No, oh, are you talking about interception? Like, like you don't have the ball. Somebody blindsided you. No, you can't. You, you can't it, block him. Right. right. You're not allowed to do no. that. So it makes sense that, like, in that rugby, I wasn't you don't aware. even like, think about that. You just think about who's getting the ball. Which Dude. you made some impressive tackles because of that rugby background. But um, Thank you. Yeah, you're – that was probably a pretty new experience. I – yeah. That yeah, you know, that was probably my welcome to the NFL moment for sure. Well, we don't have to talk about it long, but we do have to at least talk about because how crazy your story is. You made it to the Super Bowl. Um, how did you enjoy that experience outside of like the ending of the game and all that? I don't want to get into all that, but like the build up, uh, the me- the media <laughs> leading up to the game. I'm trying to keep it. You know what I mean? I'm not so Jason. Good, I'm so not good. just going to fucking chop you at the knees. I'm going to fucking be, you know what I mean? Understanding of the situation. Um, I've lost a fucking Super Bowl, too, so I get it. Yeah, all right? I, I get it. But I know, I know, how I know. how was that experience, man? It had to be. It had to be like because you literally went from not playing at all; it was just a dream to literally playing in the Super Bowl, man. Ah, uh, man, where did where did it begin? I mean, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that uh, that one that we actually were going to a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have that as a as a you know when people ask you like, oh yeah, what are your long term, short term goals? Your your five year goals, ten year goals? Like, I didn't I didn't have any of that in the process or on my list. And when he, when he found out, it really just hits you. Like, again, you just understand the position that you're in and the, the opportunity that you have to go out there. And the whole time I was just thinking like, man, everything that we've sacrificed, because it is hard, man. The NFL is a hard lifestyle um, yeah. and you get rewarded pretty well. Um, you know, the pay, the pay yeah, and, and all the other stuff that you get with it, yeah. the perks. <laughs> Definitely a lot of upside, but yeah, the downside is there's a lot too. And you know, when you make it all the way, you just are very appreciative. And especially in my case, I just reflected on everything that it took to get there. Hell yeah! And then get to go share that moment with the guys you've been you've been um, grinding it out all year with. Yeah. So, Flash forward, you are now in your sixth year in the NFL. You Damn. are, I think, as of this week. 
the number one rated tackle on PFF. Damn. For for whatever that's worth. Hmm. But, I mean, from not playing the game at all six years ago to being the highest rated tackle in the league, pretty darn impressive. We're going to get to the 2023 Eagles current, what's happening right now. First thing we're going to talk about is what everybody's talking about with the Philadelphia Eagles, which is the brotherly shove. One of the reasons we got to talk to you about this is because you're our resident, I mean, rugby expert. Um, we've talked a lot in the show. Um, it's in the news almost every week at this point across the NFL. Uh, but of course it is an integral part of the brotherly shove play. First and foremost, how do you feel about the criticism that the play should be banned because it's a rugby play? I mean, who's, who's saying that? Peter King, notably, Peter very King. much has been. Peter shout out to Peter. Which, shout out to Peter. We love shout you, Peter. Peter We're not Don't seen, appreciate but your you stance on this. You are the main one saying yeah, this we needs love to be out loud. Just to I, be clear, I love you, Peter. I mean. But you're wrong on this. I mean, it is certainly <laughs> certainly a, a take that uh, I, I don't understand why he said that. It's got nothing to do with uh, any rugby movements. <clears throat> so you're saying it's not a rugby It's not a rugby play. Is it not similar to the scrum? What? How is it different than a scrum? Dude, the scrum is much harder than the the tush push. Well, brother well I guess it depends on if it's the defense or the offense. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever what, it is. What um, the scrum is way harder. So what is? Why is the scrum harder? You have to essentially is you have to interlock with. There's two. There's three guys. Yeah. There's four guys and two. I'm <clears> seeing it. You got your shoulder around the other. Yeah. Guy. You got to interlock with guys, and yeah. then you have to. Yeah. And then you push. Then you push. But like, how much of it? How much? If I want to be, be honest with me, how much of it is kind of for show? <laughs> like, how much of it is kind of just like, oh, we're kind of just leaning on each other, but we're not really pushing. Is that I don't, how it's I don't think, you you can you can <laughs> you definitely. He's tell. been doing this to you all fucking episodes. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> what am I he's doing? I'm just asking a question. What, what am I doing? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I. Think, it's definitely not for show, bro. Okay, it's, it's real. definitely not for show. It's real push. You can you can see when they push. Sometimes when they push, yeah. they just collapse straight away because of the they're not. There's on too the, much weight. There's too much force. Yeah, it's way too much force yeah. going in. And if they don't hit it right, that's why they teams can't sustain it. Sustain it. Yeah. So it's it's definitely so not a rugby, rugby play. So it's not a rugby play. Rugby scrum harder than the brotherly shove. Yes. Okay. Do you think you are? good at the brotherly shove because i think listen a lot of people give me and jalen the most amount of credit but i think if you look at the tape unequivocally you and landon get a it's the second the majority of the dude, push it's the yeah, what what it's the second um, do you think you're so good at it mass do you at least incorporate rugby scrum techniques and fundamentals in the brotherly shove that you do or is it is it like not even close to the same thing I learned the brotherly shove here at the Eagles. Okay. I didn't incorporate anything. So nothing, nothing to carry over. Okay. Right. Leverage. <laughs> Leverage. You, JP, yeah. and Stout taught me the brotherly shove. Because let's, right, let's, let's be honest. Teach me. Teach me. Let's be honest. No. The Eagles have always been good at <laughs> running sneaks. They have been. We, like, yeah. You guys have always been good. And yeah. that's where I learned it from. And then we just carried it over. And yeah. then, you know, Sirianni's. Taking it to another level. and run, Well, he, he sees that we're really good at it because we've always been really good. Sure, and then now I just I just do whatever whatever you taught me all those years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do now. I don't want to give it away, but yeah, you gotcha. know, I just I do what you what you essentially taught me, and it works every time. How do you feel about people wanting to ban the play in general? <sighs> I get it, but then I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, like I get it, but I don't get it. Yeah. Like it's, what are we gonna? What are we gonna ban a fade to AJ Brown because it works every fucking time? <laughs> Probably not. I, I, I understand the frustrations. Like if if we were getting destroyed like that, like I would understand. Yeah, but I don't know why. More people just need to run it. They're trying. They're trying. Run so it. We need better. to get that yeah. fucking Swedish scientist. What was the dude? Organized Richie Gray. Richie- you talking yeah. about Richie Gray? Yeah, uh, Scottish. Get that, guy I mean, that was building. my Scottish accent. I thought Scottish, it was Scottish. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I, I thought it was hilarious. It was pretty spot on, like word for word, what he said, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. not the right accent, but word for word, <laughs> word for word, what what old mate was quotes. saying, what old mate was saying was true. Like, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> well, let's talk some uh, some Eagles D line, man, a little bit. And uh, you guys are going up against, I mean, 
arguably the best defensive line in the in the in the league. I mean, is Jalen Carter the best rookie you've ever faced uh, since you've been in the league? Yeah, hands down. Yeah, hands yeah, down. No, he doesn't dude play is, out on the edge too often. When he loops yeah, he's out, mostly inside. Yeah. But when he loops out, he's laughing at me. He is laughing as he's looping out from a three tech, and he's basically just trying to get get to my inside and just beat me inside yeah. after he's yeah. looped out. He's looped out all the way, and then he just comes back inside. It's amazing. It's like incredible. I've never seen anybody do that, and he's laughing the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> he's actually a really good dude. He's, he's a great actually guy. a really good dude. I'm nice. really ha- thankful that he likes me and that he likes me too. Because <laughs> I feel like he could just destroy me every yes. single time because he's on the nose and he just kind of messes around. I'm he kind of treats like the older guys like we're like like a bear like playing with like his like, <laughs> prey. You know what I mean? Just like pawing yeah. at it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, oh, thank God you're not treating me the way you just treated the backup right guard. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just be, just play cool, so Jay. Actually, just play cool. Like just play cool. Playing with its, yeah. with its food. Like, so oh my god! Just good. give him some reassurance after this. every play. Just like, oh, sorry. good rep, Jalen. Good rep. Yeah, he's, he's got a ton of. Um, <laughs> what do you think has made this unit, this this you know the the Philly Dogs or whatever whatever you want to call this D line? What do you think has made this unit just so successful? Like, is it just their tenacity, how athletic they are? Yeah, hundred percent, dude. This this group is hell athletic. Yeah. I mean, have you seen how just what is as, built <laughs> as advertised? Got I it. know. I'm serious. I'm serious. Like Fuck. these guys are. <laughs> <laughs> Love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are athletic freaks, man. And and you look at Jalen. You look at Jalen Carter, and you're just like, oh, that's it. And then he just oh, boom. Yeah, he can hit you anywhere. You, 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 if you don't give him the respect, I think that's that's it. a good point. If you don't give them the respect that he deserves, he will make a fool of you. Yeah, yeah, he will make a fool of you. Let's talk about your relationship with Jalen Hurts a little bit. Uh, you were recently asked about Jalen playing through injuries. You said, "I fucking love that. It inspires us to lock it up." Uh, <laughs> Lock, yeah, <laughs> I fucking love that. It inspires us to lock it up and firm it up and pass protection. I mean, Jesus, the guy's a warrior. Love him. I love that man. I love that man to death. Man. <laughs> That's a good quote. A lot of man. A lot of man. I think they misquoted me there. I don't remember saying that. <laughs> remember saying it exactly like that? I guess. Many mans. Um, yeah, what is what is the dynamic like with Jalen for you? Um, it, It's kind of weird, man. I, f- I feel like he's like my brother. Yeah. But then he also is like my older brother because he's got an old soul. He does have He's got an old soul. So at times I'm like, 100%, dude, man. you're younger than me. Like, <laughs> like what? Like, Why are you so oh, mature and like level-headed? Yeah, man. it's like crazy, man. Like The guy's got a, a great head on his shoulders, man, yeah. for sure. And, um, I mean, it, it's it's truly amazing seeing his, like, development. For sure. From when he came in as a rookie mm-hmm. to now, man. And he's a, he's a real true-born leader, man. Yeah. True, true ball leader. Well, I know he. Uh, I know he got Jason the uh, his first ever Louis Vuitton duffel bag. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean that was amazing. Did, that did was he cool. introduce that Louis cool. V to you? Did he introduce Louis to you? Yeah, I'm not a big uh, designer guy too, but uh, when we got this for Christmas, I was like, hey, you know, what? it's not bad. It's it's bag. Like, if I was to get a Louis bag, bag it'd be a, a black Louis bag. <laughs> this is it. This like, it'd be a black Louis bag. Yeah. I was like, nice. that's yeah. really nice. We'll be right back with our guest, Jordan Malata. But first, we want to remind the 92 percenters about the new Experience Smart Money debit card and digital checking account. It helps you score points for your credit scores without adding debt. Scoring points? <laughs> I think it's safe to say our guest, Jordan Malata and the Eagles offense, know a little something about that. My and Jordan's teammates, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, help boost fantasy football scores every week. Just like how the Experience Smart Money account helps boost the credit scores of people who use the account to make three months of certain bill payments like streaming, uh, utilities, cell phone bills, etc. Getting started with your Experience Smart Money account is fast and easy. You can get set up in minutes. Also, did we mention the uh, Experience Smart Money account has no fees and no account minimums? We did now, bro, Migo. Hey! To get your Experience Smart Money debit card and digital checking account, go to Experian.com slash Kelsey. Experian is not a bank. Experian Boost results will vary. See terms at Experian.com slash legal. All right. The holidays are here, and our sponsor, True Classic, 
is ready for it. No. It's time to break out my favorite jeans, t-shirts, and sweaters from True Classics. Never would I ever hear you promoting a clothing brand, Jason. This is a oh. this must be a remarkable brand. How about Speaking that? of the holidays though, 92 percenters, the True Classics Ultra Comfortable Perfect Fitting Essentials make for the perfect gift for guys on your shopping list this year. And right now, right now, for a right limited now? time. Right now? This November. Right they're now. giving our listeners a special Black Friday deal all month long. Up to 60% site-wide at trueclassics.com slash new heights. True Classic completely re-engineered how t-shirts fit. They're tighter around the arms, chest, and shoulders, but, you know, have that looser fit around the torso for guys like Jason. Ha 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 ha! Plus, when it comes to sweatshirts, their hoodies and crews will become your go-to for casual Fridays, game days, and trips to the gym. Whatever you choose, you can't go wrong with True Classics. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with our exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash new heights and save up to 60% off site-wide during their November holiday sale. End the year with the holiday cheer. Thanks to True Classic. All right, here we go. We uh we talk Mount Rushmore on this uh this this show. Jason, I don't forget what Mount Rushmore we asked you. Um I put myself on my own Mount again. Rushmore like a selfish prick. But let's ask you uh what your Mount Rushmore is and we're going to we're going to have some fun with you being from Australia. We'd like to rank an all-time greats <laughs> on this show. Uh who's on your Mount Rushmore of Australians? <clears throat> this is good cuz he doesn't know any tackles Historically, anyways. Perfect. So, yeah. Who do you I mean, we got some. Do you want us to throw some out there? Or do you have four that you can just... Do you need uh, I mean, what Americans... Be... So, this list was comprised of our American producers. Right. Tell us if this is a good list of Australians that represent yes. your Mount Rushmore. Okay. Yes. Russell Crowe. Yes. High? Yeah, very high. Okay. Rusty. Nice. Rusty Heath way. Ledger. Oh, 100%. I didn't know Heath Ledger was Australian or was Australian. Okay, Hugh Jackman. Oh yes. Okay. Hugh. Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. That's a good mm -hmm. list. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great list. Steve Irwin, <clears throat> the fucking yep. icon. It's number one on my list. Jesus. Nicole Crikey. Kidman. Right. Eye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth brothers. Yeah. 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 Uh, Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan. Golfer. Yeah. Not to be confused uh, with Paul Hogan. <laughs> uh, Paul Hogan, yep. Uh, look him up, please. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a, it's such a common name over there. I just want to know what yep, you're talking yep, about. Uh, oh, mate, yep. Um, Guy who invented <laughs> Foster <laughs> Bear. Fosters. <laughs> Australian for beer. Is, do you guys like Fosters? Man. Is it really the Australian beer? Fosters, of Fosters is not Australian beer. It's and, not. Uh, wait, what? It's hey, hey, Travis, fucking, you didn't I, know I this? Told you, I told you this when you came down to the drive and you betrayed me. <laughs> we let that, you let that on there, bro. You let that on there. You betrayed me. Fosters is not Australian beer. Dude, it's not it is, it's it is American it's beer just that's a, just Australian themed, made in the middle of nowhere in America. Fuck. So and you can just Ed as Kelsey a beer fed company, into all of that. Yeah, that was the other thing. Besides Reese's and Diet Pepsi's, he also <laughs> I mean, drank Foster's. Foster's. Oh wow! Yeah, and then he he always say like shrimp on the Bobby. Oh my god! <laughs> he didn't do that. Like, <laughs> Shut the fuck up! He never said that. He never did that. That's all right, what um? Fuck. Wait, time out though. So yeah, Foster's was founded in 1888 mm. in Melbourne, Victoria, by two American brothers who sold the brewery a year later. So it used to be. Oh, in, fuck me. It used to be in Australia, but now apparently it is. In I'm, I'm with you, Jordan. All right. I'll definitely go Steve Owen. Steve Owen. Peace, the one of the greats. Yep. Um, Taken down by a wild animal. Vicious fuck that animal. Mm -hmm. He should have killed race. it. They did kill it, didn't they? If they didn't, they should have killed up. itself after he fucking did that to Steve. <laughs> do, are stingrays like bumblebees? Like if they sting you, do they die? No, mm, don't no. think so. Okay. Um, yeah, Steve Irwin. <clears throat> um, Who else you got? Nick, I, I have to say Nicole Kidman. What? Yeah. Okay. Out of that list. She's, right. she's, she's a legend for sure. And then Respect it, Jason. Don't fucking ask I respect questions. it. That's not my list. I'm not Australian. I got to go back. I got to go back on Heath. I got to go back on Heath. Heath? Okay. No, no. I'm not, okay. Let me see. He's out. So we're going to go out. Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. And then. You only get four. You only get five. There's only four presidents. You get five. Oh, who? 
Who else? What we're gonna okay. Who are you? Who's honorable? Who's honorable mention that you were just about to say? This is Mount Malata. <laughs> Mount Malata. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with four. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with four. No, All you can do five. Right. That's who, respectful. Who, who's the odd man? Out? Who's the odd man or woman out? You can also choose somebody that's not. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of. Like, oh, is there like a oh, prime okay, minister okay. or like somebody? Probably, probably be like the the Hemsworth bros. Then would definitely be the fifth one. Okay. All right. The Hemsworth bros. Yeah. Since that's one. All right. Yeah. Cool. I mean. Um. Got it. I mean, that's, a, that's an honorable list right there. Now that we, we got an Australian's view of what an Australian Mount Rushmore uh, is. <laughs> I'm going to get crucified. Who, let's <laughs> discuss the fact that you're not actually Australian. Oh, my God. I was hoping you weren't going to bring it up. You really? <laughs> I think this will help. We're going to put the pressure on the Australian government. Yeah, 100%. So Jordan Mailata was born and has lived in Australia only country outside of coming to the United States. Yes. Accurately saying this. Yes. Oh, okay. But is that. not an Australian citizen. Right. Because Australia does not have naturalized citizenship. In other words, if you're born in Australia, you do not automatically get citizenship as an right. Australian. So you born and grew up there for the first 20 years of your life, and yes. you still are not Australian. Yeah. You're also not American. The only citizenship you have in the world is New Zealand because one of your parents is a New Zealander? Yes, a New Zealand citizen. So I got it by descent because yeah. my parents are New Zealand citizens. Yes. Um, but yeah, all that is true. <clears throat> so wow. technically, so technically crazy. speaking, that's, I'm a that's Kiwi, crazy. but I identify as an Aussie. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all I knew. It's all I knew. So it's like, help me out here. Help me out here. Okay, but how many more people in Australia yeah. are watching football and how much – Love, do you are you recognized in Australia as being an NFL player? Um, I, I would say a good chunk now. I yeah. uh, definitely have gotten behind watching the sport. I think the biggest killer is the time difference because sure. guys are or people have to wake the 12 up 12 hour difference, right? Uh, like well, four, depending four, on three, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Yeah, okay, gotcha. so like, yeah, so you're right at close. Up. Yep, all right. Well, yeah, what do we got to do to get my man in an Australian green? Make <laughs> this happen. Australian says she's only oh, no. representing. Some of the beautiful things that have happened in your country <laughs> represents hey, Australia hey. to the fullest hey. as an unbelievable human being and rock star athlete. I mean, what it's else like, does a guy yeah. have to do? Exactly. He's born he, the only place he's ever lived. I think we should make this happen. Who do we got to talk to? Who's Australia, the Australian, prime, get, yeah. who's the Australian gotta, prime minister? Don't get this. And that's probably why I don't have my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, stop okay, asking we'll questions, we'll Jason. We'll Jason, we'll we'll stop we'll fucking that asking we'll questions. That and that's that probably out. why I don't. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I know it. Uh, Albanese. Albanese. Albanese, yes. Nice. Shout this is the same us. guy. This is the same guy that uh, called me the night before the Super Bowl and was yeah. like, oh, I just want to say congratulations. Want to wish you all the best. Da da da. The next morning, I get up. It's all over fucking face. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. The motherfucker was recording on his end. Oh, oh like, snap. They didn't even tell me this shit. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. It's a good oh, politician right there. I was like, it's that's a, good a great politician. politician move right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's keep this thing moving to one of my favorite segments when we have a guest. It's called We Gotta Ask, but you don't have to answer. You could literally tell us to fuck off. Jumping straight into it. Jason, you want to jump into it? Sure. Uh, spoiler alert: You were on the Masked Singer, mm -hmm. okay? As Thingamabob. Um, how the hell did this come about? Um, they reached out to my agency. Okay. Yep. And I guess the casting director, <clears throat> somebody on the casting directing team, it was an Eagles fan, and they knew that they I could sing. sing. Yeah. Right. And that's they reached out to my agency, and mm -hmm. they reached out to me. Are you? upset that you were not chosen as winner. <clears throat> should you have won were there politics involved in the mass singer yes <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, i'm gonna fucking answer that one yes yes absolutely okay i okay. don't think i should have won it yeah i definitely should have gone further a lot further than i did yeah all right but no, i had a great time on the show that was great. nice man how many toes do you have because aj brown says you have 12 well this motherfucker said i had eight <laughs> what? I don't know how AJ's getting 12. That's That might be the more confusing thing. You don't have I, extra toes. You just have two of your toes that are combined. Yes. So think of this as my foot. These two are combined. But they're like fully, they're fully stuck. What the fuck? So. Yeah. Dude, you're a different the pinky species. And the, you're not I human. don't even know what to call he, that toe. But that toe, toe and that, that toe are uh, together toe like that. 
This is how evolution happens, folks. Your toes start to get webbed. You get 6'9", 380 pounds. 74. 74 pounds with uh, 15% body fat. (laughs) Mm, A little higher now. Jesus. If you were a water animal sooner, I mean, your kids might have this many webbed. (laughs) (laughs) I fucking hope not. I don't want them to go through that kind of life that I did. Okay, that was a shame of showing off my toes. Yeah, you're, young, uh, me young me would be proud. Young me would be proud. My young me used to hide my toes from people, and then yeah. when people say, "Did it? Does it hurt?" I would say, "Yeah, when you stare." <laughs> <laughs> it's when you stare, motherfucker. Like, stop staring at my toes. Right? Come on, it's just toes that stuck together. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing else. Yeah, there's nothing different. to see here. Yeah. And then I look at. <laughs> 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 so I knew I knew that person was privileged because they had five fucking toes with the way they looked at me. Probably how Nick felt when he was in the shower growing up. Nick. Fools. <laughs> Stop staring. All right, here we go. Um... <laughs> Stop <Alrighty>. staring. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's a psycho, man. All right. Well, Jason's birthday is this week. Uh, what should I get him? Jason's a big birthday guy in the locker room or what? Does he let everybody know it's his birthday? He just walks in with his birthday suit on? No, man. He, if it, It's it's whatever. Actually, all, all I know, like, okay, it's not cold out yet. Yeah. So there's still a couple more weeks with the sandals that he's rocking. So it's whatever he <laughs> likes to wear and the sandals. It, it could be jeans or sandals or shorts or sandals or pants and sandals. But the sandals are in. But the sandals are in for now. Yeah. For now. Nice. I'm um, going to get some jeans sent to the facility so he never has to rely on Kylie to bring Kylie his jeans anywhere. <laughs> I knew you would just go there. That'd be great. We talked about this on a recent episode. Flag football is coming to the Olympics in 2028. Um, are there any countries that are going to challenge the U.S. for the gold? Do you think Australia? Definitely not Australia. No, definitely not Australia. I'm you, sorry. You don't I'm think sorry. Do flag football? I maybe they might be the underdog. Um, do you think they're the biggest competition? But Samoa. I don't know, man. I, I might have to There's fund. A lot of in there. Might have to fund that Samoan team. I don't think there is a Samoan team, but well, there should be. I mean, look at the Sa- Well, I mean, first of all, it's not. Um, the Olympics yeah. are quite a ways away, but yeah. there's a lot of Samoans in the NFL now. In, mm-hmm. I mean, there's been a uh, lot of Samoans in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. They've, there's always been. Yeah. There's always been. Oh, now that I learned that in my time here. All right. If it wasn't already clear, mm-hmm. um, we read your Wikipedia page, <laughs> and it says your favorite band is Bon Jovi. Yeah. Stop it. Come on now. Living Stop on Stop it. Come on now. Definitely Why? not living on a prayer, but I no? grew up. Like Bon Jovi's Why not time. living on a prayer? That's just overplayed. Okay. And it's not it's not my favorite Bon Jovi song. Yeah. What's your favorite Bon Jovi song? Um let's go to Google and see. <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite band of all time. They're my favorite band of all time. Let's keep top five. Um probably um see now I'm gonna say the next overplayed song, which is like you go you give love a bad name, but yeah. So it's, um, it's Bon Jovi. They've been playing it for fucking what, forty years now, thirty years now. Like everything feels like it's overplayed at this point. It's just a classic. Man, it's man, just I know, a but classic. Probably, they don't play like a lot of the songs that I listen to. Like, uh, "Welcome to Wherever You Are." Have you heard that one? Possibly, exactly. uh, possibly. I'm not good with song titles. Yeah. That, so this is a, yeah. If you play, we got it, it going maybe. on. We got it going on. That sounds um, familiar. Runaway. It's probably from their first album, I think. She's a little run away. Sounds like a banger. Who is the strongest Eagles player right now? We uh Jason Jason was asked who the strongest was and he said you. What? Oh no, I'm sorry. He said you or Landon. That's gotta be Landon. It was who was this I was asked the direct question I was asked is who is the strongest Jordan? Between you, Jordan Davis, clearly you, right? Out of being Davis? Yeah. Depends on the workout. I'm being I'm being civil. I'm being Fair enough. politically correct. Fair enough. And Jason again is trying to make you fucking choose between you and somebody you really pre- respect. What was your dumbbell uh uh bench press this year? This year? Yeah. Dumbbell, what number did like you hit on each arm? <clears throat> Two hundred. 
Shut the fuck that? up. I swear, dude. For reps, dude, this isn't should, even like a one rep just, max. You should just like randomly just do a strongest man competition just to see how nah, I could do that. Like, I'm <laughs> humble enough to know that I could not last with those big dogs because I have a mate who's a so, a strong man. Oh yeah, uh, Eddie. Yeah. Um, after Jake Elliott mm-hmm. made the game winning field goal against the Commanders earlier this season, <laughs> you lifted him up in celebration. Uh, Jake has since joked it was uh, scary to be lifted by you. Um, should we double down and make this a thing? You lift Jake Elliott as high as you possibly can anytime he nails a game winner. I think it should happen. I think I think we should do that. It's kind of like the Lion King moment. <laughs> <laughs> he can be Simba and I'll be Rafiki. Rafiki? Oh, Rafiki, underrated character. Hey, you know, the Lion very King underrated. Series. Follow me. I know D-Way. <laughs> Jake already made the mistake once by trying to shut down the Chicken Little nickname. Yeah, that, I mean, you can't the more you deny it, it, you can't deny the, it. Right? You, like you once you deny it, it's just, in. It's 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 in. It's, the it's in. You just have it's to, official. You have to lie and be like, "It's a great nickname." Oh man, love oh, that. God, That's love so it. funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to do. You literally have to pretend that you love it, and then you hopefully it dies away. Grade school at all? Do you not understand how the rules of nicknames stay? The more you hate this, the more it will come. Yeah, more it sticks. <laughs> I've always I've always given Jason shit about, you know, there being no plays designed for how athletic Jason is and the fact that he averaged nine yards a pop in high school when he carried the football like a dog. Um, has there ever been a play dialed up for you? Or has there ever been a play like thought like, oh, yeah, we need to get like fucking the refrigerator Perry, just like get Jordan on a like fullback dive or some shit. They they had one. We one had was one in with Doug. It was, it was close to getting yeah. called. Uh, I never did. Sir, a Sirianni just doesn't defense. want to get creative. Yeah. Man. I did, and then they were like, "We, I reran." So we ran the play on scout team. It was actually our play, and they wanted to see if I could run the route and and just, uh, you know, if you see it there, it was actually a pass. It was a pass. It was a well, pass we had the run in for a little bit yeah. too. So I reported in, and through I was wide open. I mean, I pretty sure I was. I was wide open. Yeah. I caught the ball, touched down, ran it again because uh, uh, who was DC at the time? Uh, Jim Schwartz. A, Jim Schwartz. Yeah. He was fucking pissed that I scored a touchdown on them. He was pissed. <laughs> Made him run it again. I wasn't open. Uh, oh, yeah. We're, we're, shocker. We're, Second time you run it, defense yeah. covers it. I was like, damn. Again. Well, I think we need to bring this. We need to get you one. You're too skilled. I like you more as a running back, though. It's also – most of those plays for the for the O-linemen, all, all, you typically come to the extra O-linemen. You know what I mean? Like, we like Jordan at tackle. Jordan is fucking – he yeah, helps the I mean, team that's out saying, the right? most I, at tackle. You know what I mean? Like, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's safe. It's safe right. there. It's yeah, safe Usually there. the extra O-linemen, when you're not starting or you're, you're kind of – you know, you can be a force to be reckoned with in – Get in the game for a, for a player, a short yardage play. That's uh-huh. when they usually use those guys. But um, I'm still on board. Uh, Sirianni, get creative. <laughs> Hand it off to Jason. Jason, throw a fade to Jordan. Ooh. Right. That'd be it. Jason can't throw <laughs> He did play QB. He did, he did QB. for a fucking half, and it was not good. Didn't go well. I was there. <laughs> I was handing him water. And I was like, dude, you fucking <laughs> suck right now. You need to go back to the front and back. <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's basically what I was doing anyways. All right, here we go. <laughs> the, the National Rugby League is coming to Vegas in March. Mm. Um, should we all go out to the show? Definitely. Yeah? Let's definitely go out. Yeah? They need the money. It's official. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> We're doing it. What, they uh, need the money. They need all the yeah, money. Do you ever look back? What is the highest paid National Rugby League player? Um, it, They probably get the highest paid. They probably go for... A million and a half per season, like per season, like the top guy. So the NFL thing panned out. <laughs> <laughs> All right now. All right. <laughs> what um? This is a sicko, season man. you are. Also, the the World Cup just got finished. Over yeah. Rugby. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. Your 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 citizenship country lost. Yeah, I know. One point. Yeah. It's all good. All good. I actually kind of wore this hat because it looked like it was a spring, spring ball. ball. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a man. spring ball hat, but I, I mean, he's, this guy, he's a psycho. Guy. Man. Now I am in all black. All black. right now. Oh, man. Hey, genius play by you. That's like 400 <laughs> IQ level right there. This guy set me up. He's this guy, Albert right. Einstein. I'll be honest. I'm a, I'm a Wallaby fan just because I identify as an Aussie. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So. 
So, I mean, you know, I grew up with uh, my three older siblings were born in New Zealand, though. So, okay. watching the Bledisloe Cup was awesome and, and fun because me and my younger brother were born in Australia. So, we supported the Wallabies. And then my three older siblings were all black fans because wow. they were born oh, in New Zealand. They were born in yeah. New Zealand. Well, and the All Blacks are just. That's a fun team. <laughs> I mean, for you. I mean uh, that's like the Yankees of rugby. All right. Before we get to the stamp of the week, we talked about this. It's Halloween week. Mm-hmm. Halloween has since passed. This is going to be coming on Friday. You spend a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars shipping over Australian candy, yes, to the United States, yes. You swear that Australian candy is better than American candy. A, a thousand percent. We got We're going to try some right. of this candy out. What oh do we got? Um, no way. We got this. Is kind of like a have you had a Mars pods. Mars right. pods? Ma- Mars? Ma- oh, I've Mars. had Mars before. Sorry, Mars. No, you're good. You're Mars. good. You're good. You're good. I've never I heard can't. of pods, though. Okay. Have you ever Sorry. heard of pods? It's probably just Mars bars in a little deliciously like, rich mini Mars caramel. Let's try this out. Let's try this out. Mars it's a Mars bar. bar. Yeah, but it's a pod. Here you go, sir. It's just a fun size. And you can I just chew it? this. Do I, do I just chew it? Chew on it. Chew on it. Chew on it. Oh, oh my gosh. Travi, I wish I sent you something. Dude. So you can. So we can get your review as well. I'm so sorry. Well, this is different than a Mars because this almost has like a. It's like a wafer. wafer. It's a yeah. wafer. It's a wafer. Oh, it's a Kit Kat. <clears throat> no, dude. That's what you were saying no. was going to make Kit Kat look like shit. This is what is going to make Kit Kat, Kit Kat, in America, look like shit. That's just Kit Kat, though. So this is. Have you ever heard of Cadbury? Yeah, of course. Cadbury okay. eggs. So get Cadbury eggs, but this is their version of Kit Kat. This is fairly new. I didn't grow up with this, but I had it when I went home. Yeah, I don't know. And it, it is amazing. It looks like a Willy Wonka bar, if you ask me. Again, this is a little Kit Kat. Two. What do two you think? Two. It's damn good. Is it better than Kit Kat? You don't have to be so patriotic. You can't admit. Oh, I'll admit. I'm patriotic, but I'm fair. Mm. <sighs> he went in for seconds. They're very good. They're very good. I think I'm just so used to the Kit Kat flavor. What? Yeah. The chocolate quality is so much better. That's what Europeans say. <laughs> All right, sir. So you got to go in. You're going in for the Milky Way. I'm not going to lie. That's very milky good. Bar, I milky will bar. admit this is extremely good. I think I'm Dude. just like so psychologically ingrained in what a Kit Kat tastes like that it's, it's tasting a little bit off. Okay. But the more I eat of it, it's tasting better and better. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. I definitely should have got like, I definitely should have got like a normal Kit Kat. But oh, so then they didn't, yeah. have, they didn't have it. I don't think they had it on the site. So just so this is this a, is just this like is a, a, uh, a a white, white chocolate, chocolate yeah. Kit Kat. White chocolate oh, dude, that's my fucking jam right candy. there. I like that. Like I like that chocolate? way more. Yeah, I like that way more than just a regular. You like Kit white Kat. chocolate? I love white chocolate. It's good. <laughs> All righty. I'm not a white chocolate fan. That's really good. good. You ever have more teasers? You ever wow. you ever seen? But what are those? Uh, not milk duds. It's like another another brand. You guys have a version of this here. So this this, is these Maltesers. are Maltesers. And, oh, yeah. Um, I've had Maltesers. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like the balls. version you guys malt have balls. here. Yeah, they're like malt balls. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the brand is here, but it's absolutely yeah, terrible. Those and these. Whoppers. 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 Nice, Jason. Whoppers. Mm-hmm. All right, Jason. You got you to try this. Whoppers? Uh, 100, 1,000%. And if, if they aren't, then you can slap me. Have you ever had a nerd cluster? Is that it? Mm-hmm. Um, they look oh, terrible. Yeah. Let's go. Let's fucking right. welcome to America. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get they look to terrible, bro. I'm not- <laughs> These are terrible. What? That's what you said. They no gummy clusters, and they're tiny. They're actually, really good. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm sorry, I judged. That's one, I'm that's sorry, one for I America, you. baby. That's one for America. There we go. That's really good. A thousand percent better than Whoppers. Yeah. Way better. A thousand percent. Um, Damn it. That's three for fucking Australia. Fuck. Would you like something like a, a savory snack now? Sure. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is shapes. This is one of our number one cracker brands back home. Oh, I shouldn't even call it cracker cracker bands because it's, it's just really good. This Vegemite and cheese. I see a, the word Vegemite, and I'm very skeptical. I, I've, I've never had Vegemite. I ordered it just for you so you can try it, and so it like spam? hopefully mold. What is Vegemite? It is. I, I want to say it is. It's got zinc in it, and it's got dry yeast extract, and it's basically the leftovers of 
what they uh, of when they brew beer. It's the leftovers of what they have in the bottom. This sounds like fucking me. I'm gonna need you to uh to I don't know. You correct me. Eat this? Yes. Don't worry. This is I not this is not beer. actual Vegemite though. What do you think of it? I probably butchered that that whole. Listen, I don't know what Vegemite tastes like. If this tastes like Vegemite, does this taste like Vegemite? Yes, the Vegemite that you it's tastes like Vegemite if you don't put it on like jam. You're supposed to just put a thin layer. I'm not gonna lie, these are good. These are very good. What are they? Cheez Its? It's kind of got like a cheesy, a little bit of cheesiness to it, saltiness. Time out. What happened to the the, the, the coconut things? Yeah, make them. I bought them. <clears throat> I already got started. I couldn't. I, I already got started on these. These are called Lamingtons, and uh, they're one of my favorite bakery items to get back home. But they sell them at the grocery store, and these are basically like. Uh, sponge cakes that have been dipped in chocolate and then coated with coated with coconut. And I introduced these to the boys yesterday, and they all agreed this is they're amazing. Good. They're really good. It's called a lamington. I'm usually not a fan of coconut flavored things, but there's something about this. It's very. Is nice. it like an almond joy? Don't ever say that. No, no, I hate almond joys. Almond joys are terrible. I think. Um, and I love coconut. I don't know how. It's chocolate. almost like a hostess. Like it's like got that sponginess of the <clears> texture. Like it's like a very yeah. airy, spongy cake. It's like with chocolate light, and fluffy. coconut around it. Yeah, it's good. But there's a stable back home. I mean, so, love it. I'm in on everything I mean, but that Vegemite. Right. I probably yeah. won't try that shit. Have you ever had a Reese's? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. My Snickers. All right, let's move on to Stamp of the Week, man. <laughs> um, handing out New Heights Stamp of the Week uh, is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Jordan, our guest, uh, as our guest, you get to uh, do the honors of giving out the stamp. As this goes, it can be a player. It can be anybody that's uh, in this world taking their game to new heights. So, um, yeah, I'll give it to you, man. Take it away. Who do you got for us? Anybody? Uh, do you need some time with this? Have you? Did Jason prep you for this? I'm I assuming no. definitely do not prep me for this. All right, perfect. It could be a football player, somebody on your team, somebody just in this world that you see doing great things. It could be Vegemite. Um, <laughs> it can't be, it can't can't be, be Vegemite. Vegemite. Can't be Vegemite. Taking its new heights to America in Jason's stomach. I'm just going to do an easy one. Cool. AJ Brown with the game that he yeah. just. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's probably the worst ever. Like, AJ Brown. Probably the stamp of the week. Stamp of the week. The past eight weeks. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stamp of the week. It's a safe call. Anyway. Stamp of the weeks. Yeah. It is definitely a safe call, but definitely, I mean, the guy, the guy went out there and you, you've, like, he's got to break the record, like, you know, trying to break the record. But he's yeah. got that. He's got to play a game. He's got to win a game and also trying to accomplish that feat. And, uh, yeah, probably be the stamp of the week. All right. Shout out to AJ. Shout well, out to AJ stamp Brown. Of the week. Congrats, AJ. Congrats, Vegemite. Congrats, Jordan. Thanks for coming, hey, dude. Guys, dude. Thanks for having me, man. This is so a special, special episode. You're the best, Guys, uh, maybe one of the most interesting men in the world. So I hope you guys yeah. enjoyed this episode. <laughs> so interesting. That's it. That was fascinating. That wraps dude. up this episode of New Heights, the Jordan Mylata episode. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Make sure you're subscribed to the New Heights channel on YouTube so you know when all the new episodes are coming out. And uh, listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, and this episode is also presented by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's the debit card that builds credit without debt. Get you one, son. Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. Thanks to our production and crew. Thank you, Jordan, for fucking Thanks, coming through. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Giving Appreciate Jason it. Some, uh, some Australian candy so he can be nice and fat for this week's game. And uh, thank <laughs> you to all the 92%ers for tuning in, baby. Until next time. Peace. Peace.